Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct, and I'm here today with you, and I have a cabled hat that I'm just starting, and it's called Jason's Cashmere Hat. And this is written by Melissa Tom Thomas Thompson, and you can see how nice that hat is. And here's mine. I just started it this morning. So it's gonna be beautiful. And I'm sampling a new yarn by Lang, and it's called Fire, and it's a bulky weight yarn, do you see? And if you look here on our label, it is a super wash wool, and it is 98% um, virgin wool and 2% polyester. So it seems like it's knitting up very nicely. If you look at the yarn itself, it's very fluffy and a pleasure to knit with, no splitting or anything like that. Do you see how fluffy it is? <laughs> so hopefully, um, yeah, this will be a nice uh, gift for Christmas, and then I'll get a good chance to be able to sample the yarn and see if I this. like it. People are coming online, so why don't you show them that again? Sure. This is called um, this one here, Maybe or the yarn? The actual oh, um, the, project. the project. Here's the project. I just started it this morning, and it's a super easy project, and it just involves some ribbing and uh, cable left. And so I wanted to share that with you because it makes a great Christmas gift. If you're wondering what to make your loved ones and it's getting down to the wire here, being able to make a project that you can finish by Christmas is always a plus <laughs> and not have to, you know, knit day and night and wear, your, wear yourself out. So it makes a great gift. And a lot of people appreciate a nice cabled hat. I think it's good for men and women too, don't you think, Jim? Could, could they use um, Plymouth Grande for that? You could use Plymouth Grande for that, but you might have to change the stitch count. The pattern actually is for them. an Aran weight yarn. And so when I did mine, I'm changing the stitch uh, count on mine for a bulky weight. And we can take a look at that in just a moment and see how I figured out how many stitches to use. Don't forget to let us know where you're from and what you're working on. And you may be entered to win a prize when you post comments in those comment section. So for this last week, we had a this lovely Bravo yarn, which is 100% baby alpaca made in Peru. And it is beautiful yarn. So I don't know which one. Do you know which one was the winner for this week? We'll keep it a surprise till the end. Okie dokie darn. Shucks. Anyway, I'm doing this hat right here. Do you see how it has braided cables? And I want to release it for you, but it's not quite ready. And so what I did with mine is you'll see these two yarns here that I've used. And guess what? One is Ultra Alpaca Chunky, and the other is Plymouth Grande. It's their hand paint um, collection. Actually, it's not. It's probably the solid colored one. But you, do you see how they're exactly the same color? Well, we have a lot of yarns like that that are the same color, and guess why? Because they're made in the same factory. And we have a lot of yarns that we carry that are made from that factory in Peru. Because there's like two main factories in Peru, right, Jim? Yes. And um, so you're, they're either made in one factory or the other. But you can tell that these yarns are probably made all in the same factory, even though it's not identified on the tag. But you can kind of tell by the color card they're using because the factory only has a certain color card. Right, Jim? Well, you can get your own colors, but it's... You it's can, longer. but for the most part a lot of the yarns are in similar colors. So I wanted to show you a couple examples of that. So if you're knitting a project, say you wanna make a baby alpaca hat and you want to make ultra alpaca mittens, for instance, because the wool is a little bit sturdier and will last a little longer. So you could take these two colorways and if you look at them very carefully, do you see how one is made from Barocco Yarn Company, Ultra Alpaca Chunky, this one here? And then this one is our yarn, and it's made from 100% baby alpaca. But do you see how close in color they are? They're wonderful. You could make sets out of this stuff. So let me show you another example. Here's an ultra alpaca uh, chunky. These aren't exact matches, but they're very, very close. And one is ultra alpaca and chunky, and the other one is Plymouth Grande. And... Um, they would make a nice little matched set too. Now, one more sample and then I won't um, go on with this anymore. Okay, look at these two yarns. They're from Bravo Alpaca and Pure Alpaca. So what that tells you is they're, it's the same 
colors. They're very, very similar. So when you're doing a project, say you love one of the colors that are from the Cascade line and you like some of the ones from Bravo line or the Bravo Petites, you can interchange and intermix them because they'll be the same gauge and the same quality and they'll look exactly alike. So just know that you can combine some colors and get some really good, uh, uh, even larger color palette by knowing that little bit of information. Isn't that cool? So here we are with our cabled hat. Yes, Jim, that's true. So the contest Jim wanted me to mention to you, our contest for this week. And I thought I was doing one skein of Plymouth Grande, and then I was gonna do a skein of Ultra Alpaca Chunky. So for this week, I was thinking the prize would be, would you like them to have the Baby Alpaca Grande or the Ultra Alpaca Chunky? You guys choose. And then we can send the winner out for next week. So you vote on it. And then when you vote on it, you get to help choose the color you think is the best or you get entered to win as well. So either way, it's good for you. So, so right? yes. So go ahead and vote in whether you want the Barocco or Plymouth. They're both really nice yarns. I love them very much. And so then next week we can, get, we can get those out to them. Don't forget as we're going along, if you post comments in the comment section about what you're knitting, we love to hear that because it gives us ideas for future Technique Tuesdays or ideas for maybe knit club projects, all those things that you love. So go ahead and post comments in the comment section and then you'll be entered for the prize for next week. There's two questions here. Yes. Me. One sure. Thursday said happy Thanksgiving. So. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. It's so wonderful. We aren't going to have the big group that we usually have. And I am so sad that we can't have our family all together. But we are having a little bit smaller of a group. And we get to spend our Thanksgiving with Kara and her husband, Mark, and our niece, uh, great, nie uh, great niece, great niece, Misha. And so we will have great fun with them. Misha's so that'll be great. Misha's yeah. <laughs> yeah, Misha does have Misha's mittens. Um, we've already given those to her so she can keep her fingers one. There's a comment also so. about this. She, uh, one of the, I didn't see her name, but she said she always struggles with cables they, to get them to come out looking good. Oh, cables. Cables are so much fun. I have this new, uh, I haven't tried this cable needle yet, but I've been wanting to. It's by Knitter's Pride. And they have three different cable needles in one. And do you see how they have the different, for the different gauges? And, and these are called the Dreams cable needles. And so I thought we would look at them together. And what's interesting about them is, do you see the ridges? on the actual cable needle itself, that'll keep your cable needle from falling out of your stitches. So if you have the kind of cable needle holder that is made from metal, um, your stitches could slip off pretty easily, but this one is wood and Where's it has the these little needle? ridges. Where's the ridges? Right you, you can see they have little ridges in them. They all the have the uh, ridges in them. Do you oh, see yeah. it? Okay. Yeah, and, and that makes it so your stitches won't fall off. So I thought we could, um, Take a look at that. So first thing that I wanted to look at with you is I have the pattern here, and this is Jason's cashmere. And you guys have posted, um, Jim, you have posted a link so that they can find it. Meg will. Oh, good. Okay. Um, so that is the lovely cabled hat. And what's really neat about it, if you look at it, it just has um, it has two by two ribbing on the bottom, meaning uh, knit two, purl two ribbing, or purl two, knit two, whatever. They call it two by two ribbing. And then if you look here, these are just cables going to the left. So it's just cabled left. So that, I think that's pretty cool. So that's a quick knit then? It's pretty, especially what I've done. On mine, if you're doing a cable hat, you know, we've had people ask, how do you know if it's gonna fit? And I would say what I was doing with this one is there's the, if you look at here, it's a 12 stitch repeat. And the way that I can tell what the repeat is, and you want to know what the repeat is because it tells you if you get the repeat, like rounds one through three, this is six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So that tells you that you can increase or decrease the stitch counts by multiples of 12 because when we get to the crown it does matter that the 12 stitch repeat is 
maintained um, because otherwise your crown decreases aren't going to work out right. So that's why you always want to look at that. So on, see on these ones, that is 12 stitches. So what I did with mine is I started casting on and every 12 stitches I would place a stitch marker. And then I'd go 12 more stitches and 12 more stitches and 12 more stitches and 12 more stitches. And I know that I'm using um, bulky weight yarn. So the first thing that I look at is what you think about what kind of needles would you, what size of needles would you use with your yarn? Well, we always look at our ball band. And if you look on here on the ball band, do you see how you have 13, size 13 needles? And um, so it's it's pretty big. So what you want to do, and this is hard, kind of hard to tell. I, mean, I think this might be nine millimeter. Um, German or something? Well, um, that is in millimeters in right. European or whatever. Anyways, but um, so I did, usually when I do my ribbing, I go down to needle size. So what I did is I did number 11 needles on mine. And it almost, it's it's going to be okay for the brim. Um, it could have even maybe been on 13. It's hard to tell because if I had done a number 13 needle for my ribbing and then cast on the same amount of stitches, it would be, uh, it almost definitely would have been too big for my head. Because when I look at my hats that are in the closet, um, the ones that I wear the most and that I like the most are about eight and a half inches. And you can see on here where I could slide this and get a little bit of width. And this cord is 16 inches. So if I was laying this cord sideways and my knit was from here to here, it would be 16 inches. Or um, if it's, it's doubled, it's eight. So what I'm saying about that is that when um, if, if I made it bigger than this, it would be too big for me. So I had to go on a smaller needle and um, I, ca I, I could go. See, there's no sizes between 11 and a 13. So you have to choose 11 or 13. You can't choose 11.5 or 11.75 like they have in 10s, but um, they don't have that in 11s, at least not in the needles that we carry. And so anyway, so I did that and I did a multiple of five, which was 60 stitches that I cast on for this bulky weight yarn. And then when I measured it just a little bit stretched out, it was, this is more like nine inches when it was stretched out just a tiny bit. So I know that when I block it, it it's going to fit just about right. And then when I um, start doing this cable section, I actually should have increased my needle size to a number 13, but I wasn't really worried about it this morning because I'm just showing you cabling, the cable left, and I need to go back and finish my ribbing because my ribbing isn't quite four inches and I want it to be a good healthy four inches so that when I fold it over, this starting of the cable isn't showing. I don't want that to show. And so I need to do a little bit more length on my ribbing before I do it. But I wanted to show you, let's see if we can do these, the cable left with this handy dandy little tool that's here. So I just thought that was kind of cool. So when we cable left, you're gonna hold the stitches in front. And the way that I remember the left versus the right is that when I do a right leaning cable, R-I-G-H-T, then I hold it in the R-E-A-R -E in the rear, right? Right is rear. So left is just the opposite of that. So I hold it in the front. So I'm just going to slip these right onto this cable needle and then I would knit three stitches. And then I can either just, uh, you would just slip these back to your, here, back to your left hand needle and then they're twisted. And then of course this is a little hard for me to work with because I'm using bulky weight yarn and I should have increased my needle sizes. But, and this um, yarn has a bit of structure to it anyway. So that is a cable left using this handy dandy little cable needle. I kind of like these. You know, a lot of times when I cable at home, I'm either cabling without a cable needle or I just cable with an extra um, knitting needle. Any need knitting needle will work like just like this. You just hold the circular needle in the hand. It doesn't matter if there's a cord hanging down. It still cables just fine. 
but I'll, I'll show you real quick what I do when I cable without a cable needle. So when I cable without a cable needle, I'm gonna work over to where that cable is. So this is, um, knitting this hat is super easy. And do you know on Ravelry, there were like over 5,000 projects on this hat. So it is a uh, pretty popular hat. So it's pretty cool. So when I'm cabling left, that means I have to hold the cable needle in the front. So, but when I'm cabling without a cable needle, I just scoop those stitches over with my working yarn in back then I would go ahead and knit those three stitches. And then what I do is I grab these other stitches in the front and you have to be careful when you slide your needle back. And I'm going to hold it, hold those three stitches with my left hand and just hold them in place. And if you don't capture the yarn exactly right, it's fine, you can fix it when you're knitting. There, okay. So what did you just do? I, I cabled without a cable needle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of struggling a little bit because the, the needle size on this yarn is it's too small. But do you see that one right there where it's caught? When it come back around again, I'll fix that and um, get that strand of yarn back on the needle the way it should before I continue on. But that's how you cable using this handy dandy cable needle or just cabling without a cable needle. And I would have an easier time if I, this yarn is structured, so you don't want to put it on too small of a needle because it turns it into a stiffer fabric. So for this top part, I am going to try it on a 13 and see how it does. If that doesn't work, I'm going to bump it up higher. Um, if, it's, if it seems like it's too much, I could even do my ribbing in a 13 and just do the four repeats of the 12 stitch pattern instead of uh, putting casting on 60, I would cast on 48 because um, 12 and 12 is 24 and 24 um, is 48. Yeah, so that is pretty cool. This is a super easy hat. So if you have gifts that you wanna give people and you wanna give them something that's really cool that you have made yourself and you don't have a lot of time to actually knit those projects, doing a simple little hat like these hats is totally fantastic. And so um, I, I like the idea of giving cabled hats to people, don't you, Jim? How long you, would that take you to knit? Like if you sat down to figure it out and you got it going, you figured it out. Well. Well, I did this in about an hour. Okay. So how long would you think to do it? So hat? to do the whole hat, and I could sit down in one afternoon and do more than one half of the hat in that afternoon, and then finish it up the next morning mm -hmm. and have the hat all done. I could do several of those. Uh, actually, I kind of like the idea of using the magic loop button and doing two at a time. <laughs> I really want to do that. And you can do I haven't done, hats. yes, I haven't done it lately, but if you wanted to do, you know, two different colors and, and do the hat at the same time, you can get in, uh, in not too much more time, you get two hats instead of one <laughs> by using that magic loop button and doing two at a time. And then you would have two exact hats. So I don't know. I, it seems like fun. I want to do that. I haven't done it recently, but I have done it before. And so, and I also highly recommend these um, Knitter's Pride cable needles. These are pretty cool. Don't you think they're neat? I love the ridges, how your stitches won't fall off. And I like that it is a nice, warm wooden needle um, at, that has the different sizes too. There's one other comment. It says, yes. I always have ladders. So you, maybe can read you always have ladders when you do your- On the left side of the cable. Hmm. Well, sometimes, well, actually some might, well, I don't, these aren't ladders, but sometimes the stitch, sometimes the stitches get elongated. See, like right in here. Do you see right in there? They're a little bit elongated. But it actually still looks beautiful. Don't you think that looks good? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I actually like it. And if you stretch it out, isn't that a cool? It's a cool hat. So is there a question, how many so, balls of yarn does it take to make that hat? One. One skein of yarn, you can make your cabled hat. Yes, and so that's totally fantastic. If you, if you get like ultra alpaca chunky, you could do a full hat with one skein and you'd be tickled pink 
I mean, having the alpaca on your head is a treat, huh, Jim? Yep. Don't you love your alpaca hats? I like my hats. Yes, I like our alpaca hats. <laughs> They're especially nice. Um, so anyways, but I guess I am a little prejudiced <laughs> against it. But it's a good thing to be prejudiced is, you know, loving good quality. So it's totally fantastic. Um, so what's the contest for the, uh, the oh, the Yes, yeah, so can I say who won now? Yeah. Where is my little, oh, I got to look at my sheet. Let me make sure I've answered all of the questions we had. We had people asking questions. So let me find those questions. Ah, someone had asked, how do I block a project without stretching it? Well, here's what I do. Okay, I if, if at all possible, I like to take a little bit of of the Yukon or hair shampoo or baby magic, whatever I have close by. And a lot of times I will put a little bit of vinegar in the water, right, Tim? Because vinegar sets the dye. So if you have a dyed yarn where the color isn't staying, meaning it's coloring the water when you're doing it especially, good idea to put a little vinegar in there because that will set the dye. And I put it in a warm bath, but not a hot bath, and just get it all um, in the submerged in the sink. And then I let it rest there for about a half an hour. Then when I take it out, I just squish it into the sink and then I take a towel and squish it again. I don't wring my projects. Um, we don't wanna twist the stitches and um, mess up that beautiful work that we've done. And then I will just lay it out flat. And if you don't choose to stretch your project, then by all means, don't stretch it. Just put it in the shape that you want it to be and don't pin it, let it dry. Because if you don't pin it, it's going to shrink back up to the gauge that it wants to be. So that's a great way to do it. Just don't pin it. And then I like to put it on spare bed, right, Jim? Mm -hmm. And I put it on the blocking mats and I turn on the fan and I just leave the fan on all night. And the next morning, my project is bone dry and ready to use. Unless it's I turn off the lights. Oh, yeah. Jim is really good. Do you know the only time he turns off a light oh. normally? Yes, is when I have a project on the bed trying to be blocked. Then, of course, he goes out of the room and clicks the light switch off. I'm like, seriously, could you not do that? Yes, I need the light on because when the light is off, it also turns the fan off. Do you train me to turn the lights off? <laughs> right. Anyway, so that's a great way to block your project without stretching it out. And the next question is, how do I tell if my hat will fit? First, I would say, look in your closet, find your favorite hat, take out your tape measure, measure it. How tall is it and how wide is it, right? How wide is your hat and how tall is your hat? And that gives you a general idea of what you like, right? So you would make a hat that is close to that as a possible, also, if you're knitting with our 16 inch circular needles and you cast on stitches and you can't make them join because the stitches are so stretched, I can tell you your hat probably is not gonna fit you. <laughs> ah, conversely, if you use a 16 inch needle and you cast on a whole bunch of stitches and every all these stitches are totally squished together, guess what? You probably will get a hat that is too big. <laughs> so you know how Goldilocks says about the porridge. <laughs> you want it just right. You want your stitches to be able to stretch a little bit when they're on the needles, kind of like this. Okay, so it stretches a little bit. It's going to be a little bit bigger than 16 inches, but not too much bigger than 16 inches. So when I cast on and I'm just casting on my stitches and joining in the round, I can tell you, not for certainty, but very close to whether or not it's going to fit. Now, on this pattern, when there's a 12 stitch repeat, you can go by 12 stitches. And if it seems like, oh, it's really squished, take off 12 stitches. But if you take off 12 stitches and then it's really stretched, then you might have to use a different yarn or a different needle size. 
you could do one of those things. So for this one, I chose to use a little bit smaller needle because it's a brim. And I like my brims to be snug because I'm always running. And what happens to my winter wear if it's not on there good? It will fall right off and get lost. Yep. So I would venture to say that it's kind of nice to have a brim that's tighter. How do you like that so, yarn? So now that you've knit with it, you're testing it for. So I like, like this yarn. Mm -hmm. Lang yarns. This yarn is called, oh, excuse me, Lang Yarns. This is by Wool Addicts. <laughs> I'm going, is it Lang Yarns? Okay. <laughs> they have good quality yarns. I have been very impressed by quite a few of their uh, yarns that they have. And this one's called Fire. And so it's made in France, or made in Italy. It is nice. I have had a hard time finding bulky weight yarns that I really, really like. And a lot of the bulky weight yarns, when you knit them, I find that because I knit a little tighter, sometimes they turn into a brick. <laughs> it's not ideal. <laughs> I need to think about going up in needle sizes and maybe drink a glass of wine or relax. <laughs> yes. All right. So let's do the contest. So which one did you say was the winner for this one? For last week? Yeah. It was the gray. But it was oh, very close anthracite. This is anthracite is the winner for this week. So you guys don't forget to vote for this next week. This is the Ultra Alpaca Chunky. And then we have the Plymouth Grande or Ultra Alpaca Chunky. And you guys choose and we'll send this out in the mail next week. Plymouth or Barocco. Yep. Plum Plymouth or Barocco. They're both very nice yards. I love them both. And let's look and see who our winner. Ah, so our winner for this week is Denise Ava. Johnson. Denise, you won. Congratulations. You won this one, the anthracite. Oh my goodness. I love this. this is one of my most favorite colorways. I'm not usually a great fan of a black yarn, but this gray mix is delightful. And I would knit this colorway any day of the week, even though you know how some people just hate knitting with black yarn. This colorway makes such beautiful projects. It's a good men's hat too. Good color for men's hats. It's a great color. I've used it so many times. It's one of my most, I think I've used it almost more than any other color. Mm -hmm. Love, love, love this and there's yarn. There's no dye in that, right? Oh, I'm, uh, I don't know about that. Oh. I'm not sure about that. Some of the other colors, may uh, not so much, but maybe this one okay. might have some dye in it. Um, but it, it is a great yarn either way. It's a great yarn. I love it. So, Denise, congratulations. What you do to, you contact us at Alpaca Direct at Customer Service, and then give us your address, and you can get this out in the mail to you right away, and you can enjoy it. Maybe you can make a hat for yourself or someone else for Christmas. That would be great, huh? Mm -hmm. Totally fantastic. So, for this next week, Oh, and mentioning we're going to have some Black Friday specials coming up, too. Oh, yes. Um, Jim is working fast and furiously on our Black Friday specials. Yep. And so look for those. And then um, next week, I don't know if I'm going to be doing – oh, we were going to do a headband. Yeah. Yes. I, I Jim said that a lot of you really liked a particular headband. Mm -hmm. And so I was going to do a headband for next week. So I thought that would be fun. Quick now. Yes, another quick knit for Christmas gifts. So I hope you guys have a very happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy what time that you have with your families. It's so nice to be able to cherish our families or what, you know, Zoom. I know we're, we're not with very many of our family members this year anyway. It's been heartbreaking, actually. But we're hoping by next year, everything will be ironed out and we can get back to normal goodness gracious it's been a long haul so i hope you guys have a great thanksgiving and i will talk to you next tuesday